Finish your question. Thirty seconds, please. Uh, thanks, uh, Colonel. It, it's 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 kind of sad if, and funny to hear the minister talking about anomalies and 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 uh, no listening to her and, and the sort of amnesia that affects her and the the, the Fine Gael party generally and indeed Fianna Fáil. Uh, you know, you brought in question, those. Please. You, question, you changed please. those bans. Question. You please. changed those bans and inflicted uh, those uh, inflicted that suffering on the on the women concerned. The, the pre-2012. The other anomaly I want to ask you about, obviously, is the Labour Court recommendation of 19293 uh, of July 2008 in relation to pensions for the 1,250 uh, CE supervisors and assistant supervisors who manage 25,000 uh, staff at Genoka Hirlock, uh, carrying out wonderful work all over our parishes and communities throughout this island. Um, and um, you, the, several commitments have been made that we, we would address this anomaly, this other anomaly, uh, and you've done nothing so far, Minister. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Just in relation to the Deputy's preamble, I just put on the record that it never ceases to amaze me the conceitedness of the far left on I, the monopoly of compassion I that they think they don't own. Want to, I don't want a second preamble. I propose to take ahead? PQ 6, 14 and 17 together, Chairman. And the Community Employment Scheme supervisors are employees of private companies in the community and the voluntary sector that receive uh, public funding. And they're not employees of my department, or indeed are they public servants. There are currently 1,346 supervisors and assistant supervisors employed within the community employment sponsored organisations. And the department does, as you know, fund wages and training costs in respect of CE participants and the supervisors, but it does not and has not ever provided provision for funding for CE supervisor uh, pensions. Employers, including CE sponsoring organisations, are legally obliged to offer access to at least one standard personal savings account, PRSA, under the Pension Amendments Act of 2002, and I'm sure the Deputy well knows that. But on foot of the Labour Court recommendations, the issue of CE supervisors' pension is currently being examined by the Community Sector High Level Forum, which is chaired by the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform. And a number of departments, including my own, are represented on this group, as indeed are the unions and public. A detailed scoping exercise was carried out with the input from the Irish Government Economic and Evaluation Services on the potential costs of providing exchequer reports for the establishment of uh, such a pension scheme for employees across the community and voluntary sector in Ireland. And the exercise clearly illustrated that the matter presents a very significant impact to the exchequer with the potential cost to the state of 188 million per annum every annum in respect of the funding to enable an employer pension contribution in state-funded community and voluntary organisations, excluding any provision for an immediate ex gratia lump sum payment of pension as sought, which could, depending on the size of the sector, entail a further exchequer cost of up to £318 million. And whilst, Chair, I'm very conscious that the issue relates to the community employment supervisors and assistant supervisors, such individuals do only comprise of one small sector of the wider community and voluntary sector, and any provision of state funding for a scheme in respect of those employees will potentially give rise to claims for similar schemes on the part of those in the broader sector, thus crystallising the potential level of liability. Any solution Thank to you. this issue will require careful cooperation and consideration, and in particular, um, consideration for the scarce uh, resources of the economy. Thank you very much. Now, first call on Deputy Brune and then Deputy Brady. So, 60 seconds. Last a few points you're making, Minister. It's the, it's the old mantra. Uh, I think when, when community employment uh, and later on JI was set up, um, uh, you know, people, uh, I think it was Rory Quinn actually who began the SES scheme in the mid 80s, a long time ago, uh, but people didn't, uh, didn't realise that at that stage it would become such a fundamental part of our society in terms of local development, in terms of training, in terms of caring, in terms of childcare, of course, a whole range of development. I, 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 and, and just, uh, just to say, uh, I'm a director uh, on behalf of the community, I think, of a number of these companies, as I have been before politics and all through my political career. But I mean, the wonderful work that's carried out both for the individual themselves in their training and indeed for, for, the, um, uh, for, for the work that they do, it has to be recognised. Now, I know the Lansdowne Road Agreement, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you, you refer to that, the, the high-level forum, which I think Deeper uh, actually chairs, um, uh, you, we were expecting 
expecting, I think, in late 2017, uh, we would have some, you know, some output from that. And we had a debate here, a two-hour debate, I think, which our Sinn Féin colleagues uh, put forward, um, in, in which clearly the figures, the kind of costs, you, you're quoting the Irish Government Economic and Evaluation Service of four or five hundred million, but we, we put those figures at a much lower cost uh, in, in budgetary terms, and I think that's something that has to be revis revisited uh, urgency. But in justice, Minister, uh, you're very, every one of us is uh, deeply aware and grateful for all the work that's been carried out. Local groups, they do, they are very valiantly trying to uh, support uh, their, their supervisors, their assistant supervisors for brilliant work that they've done over decades. Uh, and I think it's something that, like, like your previous question in relation to the women's pensions pre-2012, you should recognise it now Thank and begin you. to move on it. Get Thanks, Gerlach. Thanks, Minister, the programme for government uh, states that the government will respect the WRC, the Workplace uh, Relations Commission, and the Labour Court, and ensure that both bodies are supported to f fulfil um, their roles. So I'm asking as to whether that commitment still stands. And even when we were dealing with the uh, employment miscellaneous bill, uh, there was a number of, of amendments, and, and the minister, um, you know, cited legitimate concerns as to the implications those amendments would have on, on the workings of the WRC and, and, and the Labour Court, and that was dealt with. Um, there is a quite clear ruling from the, uh, the WRC in 2008 that has been ignored by successive uh, ministers, successive governments, um, affecting 1,250 CE supervisors and their, their assistants. Um, the minister hides behind the, the, the scoping exercise that is being carried out. Um, she you. brings in community and voluntary sector and comes up with this figure of 188 million, which you know, had no part of the WRC ruling back in, in 2008. Yes. They were quite clear, quite categorical in what was uh, being proposed, that it had to be uh, pensions for CE supervisors and their assistants. Uh, Minister, can I get an exact figure as to how much it will cost solely for the CE supervisors and their assistants to put in place a, a pension scheme uh, for uh, those individuals Thank doing you. exceptional work across yeah, the, the minister, com communities the minister, in this state? The Minister comes back in, and I'm going to make this appeal because both of you have to come back in. The two deputies have been sitting here a long time, Deputy Durkin and Deputy Murphy O'Mahony. And I want to ensure that they get in before 12 so that their questions can be answered. So again, I ask you to stick you know, to the rules and regulations, which we all agree to in running this House. So I'm going to ask you all to be brief so that we can accommodate those two deputies who have been sitting here a long time. Thank Thanks, you. Chair. Um, the first thing I'll say is that the Community Sector High Level Forum includes representatives of not only the various government departments, statutory agencies, but also the union representatives. Um, and to be fair, the forum is chaired by DEEPER, but it includes the various departments, obviously, that have responsibilities towards the community and voluntary sector, and not just the valuable organisations that provide our CE schemes for my department, but it extends to various other departments and the responsibilities towards those people um, that provide valuable services in our community um, is recognised by all of the departments, and that's why the High Level Forum was established. Um, Deputy, I'm not sure if you're aware but the history of this case was that the Labour Court made a recommendation. They don't make a ruling, they made a recommendation. And that recommendation has been scoped um, by input from the independent government economic and evaluation services on the potential costs of providing uh, exchequer support to all of the community and voluntary service. Because unlike you, as an opposition deputy, um, we don't have the option of picking or pitting one part of the Thank community you. and voluntary sector against another. And so if you're going to do something, you respect equally the contribution that all of the community and voluntary sector Thank makes. You. And that's why this is such a difficult task, because if it was easy to fix, it would have already been fixed. Thank you very much. And to answer your question, no, we haven't looked at individual costs for Thank CEs, you. because you can't fix this problem without causing another problem over there. And we've Thank learned you. the lessons of the past of trying to fix things okay, in a small piecemeal way by not ignoring or by ignoring okay. the outputs okay. um, from there. Can we have a quick that. comment from both your first deputy, Brown? Yeah, thanks, Minister. Well, Minister, you could make a start, I think, with the, the, the community <laughs> employment. 
uh, supervisors and the assistant supervisors. I mean, uh, you know, there's no question. We did have this debate. I don't think the IG's figures that I quoted earlier, I don't know, up to 500 million or whatever, uh, you, you, that, that's obviously if, if you have an immediate big bang uh, approach. But if you, if you deal with the injustice, with the fact uh, that, uh, you know, recommendation 19293, it's, it's sitting there for 10 years, whatever excuse could have been made in relation to the crash and the aftermath and the austerity period, uh, you know, there's no validity in that now. There's, there's a, there's a, 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 I mean, it's crying out for justice. Now, you yourself, you, you've been uh, uh, floating the idea, obviously, the supplementary uh, savings scheme, the automatic enrolment, this, uh, this plan by, uh, you know, for 2022-23, uh, that it, this will not happen again to any segment of our society for people who have given very valuable service to communities. But it, you. so, you know, can't you therefore, in line with that, uh, begin uh, in this budget and, uh, and the budget committee we're meeting, Minister uh, Pascal Dunhill, this afternoon, uh, as a start, you. Uh, can you not uh, implement this recommendation okay. at a very Deputy modest Green. cost? Minister, I'm not asking you to introduce anything piecemeal. I'm asking you to introduce the full recommendations of the WRC back in, in, in 2008. And what their recommendations laid out would cost a fraction of the 188 million in which you uh, cite, cite those figures of. So we're not talking about piecemeal. We're talking about you know, following up your commitments in the programme for government, honouring and, and respecting the WRC and not being um, an impediment in the work that they actually carry out. Now, there was um, a, a dull motion passed here before the, the, the summer recess brought forward by uh, your, your friends in, in Fianna Fáil, which Sinn Féin um, supported, um, calling on, on government to um, implement the recommendations from the WRC. So, Minister, can I ask, we're coming into the budgetary process in the no next couple of weeks, we'll have a, a negotiated budget presented um, between Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. Can I ask as to whether there have been any discussions at this stage about implementing uh, the Dáil motion, which Thank was you. voted through? Um, have there been any discussions between Fianna Fáil and yourselves about implementing uh, the pensions for CE supervisors and thank their assistants. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. Quick final comment for you, Minister, so we can move on. To Thanks, other Chair. Questions. Just to remind the both deputies, because they seem to maybe ignore this or have forgotten it, the high level forum not only consists of people from a variety number of departments who, as I said, Chair, have responsibility to the voluntary and the community sectors, but it also includes representatives of Pubble and it includes representatives of FORSA and SIP2, who are the pe people's representatives in that community and voluntary sector. If there were suggestions as to how we could find, magically, the half a billion euros that's potentially needed, and maybe, Johnny, you'll come out with a great uh, budget yourself in the next couple of weeks and show us what you'd cut or what you'd actually stop doing to provide that extra 500 million every year, uh, and we might have a look at it. If, if there was an easy solution to this, Chair, then the high-level forum, including the representative bodies of both unions, we would have already found that solution. But the meetings of that high-level forum will continue. The unions have met with the minister over the, uh, over the summer months and do actively and will actively continue to pursue ideas in an effort to try and resolve this issue. It's not going to be fixed until we all find a solution to be able to fix it, and we'll continue to work okay. so and do so. Uh, Deputy Durkin, would you allow the Minister to answer and forfeit your 30 seconds so as to try and get Deputy Murphy O'Mahony in as well? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Um, all decisions taken by the Department's deciding officers and dedicated persons are appealable to the Chief Appeals Officer. About 85% of all claims are awarded and only 1% of all of the claims that are made are appealed annually. So it's actually a very small number. Nevertheless, the Department is genuinely concerned in these cases that they're dealt with as quickly as we can. Significant effort and resources have been devoted to reforming the appeals process in recent years and as a result the annual processing time has improved from what was a staggering 52 and a half weeks for an oral hearing in 2011 to 26 weeks in 2017 and 25 weeks to a summary decision down to 19 weeks in 2017 and the most recent figures for the period of January are now at 30 weeks for an oral hearing and 25.2 weeks uh, for a summary hearing. I know that like, this is raised with me on a number of occasions. It's too long. Uh, we need to increase it. There's a number of reasons 
why it is as long as it is. And one of the things we're going to attempt to do is to simplify the carer's application form so that that process speeds up. And so therefore people are not waiting four months to get a rejection before they then have to wait another four or five months to do their appeal. We are doing everything. We have an example to cite that we had some great successes with the domiciliary care allowance application that was at one stage taking up to 26 weeks. Um, but because of a redesign with DCA warriors and other interested bodies that were um, using the forms and finding them complicated, we designed a new form and the application time for DCA applications is now down to five weeks. And so I have every um, anticipation and expectation that when we introduce a new form, the new carers form, um, that we will have the same results. But I hear your concerns, Deputy Loud and Clear. Thank you.